The first thing is here's a PN ID and in the bottom right side you will always have the title block where you will have the PN ID number, the unit etc. Then you have the vessel here. The vessel always has a name to it and either at the top or the bottom you will have the vessel details to it. The vessel details look typically like this. Let's take an example to understand what important information we can extract as an engineer. The first thing is the name of the vessel. So here if you see it's a feed heater condensed pot. So basically it's a condensed pot. So not a very critical equipment. But if you see here, you have two important data, which is the design pressure and temperature. That means in any normal or abnormal conditions, maximum the equipment will measure this much pressure it would experience or this much temperature. Then the next thing is the material, which is very important. If you see here, it's mentioned CS plus 3 mm CA. The CS stands for carbon steel plus 3 mm CA stands for 3 mm corrosion alloyance. So even if in need of corrosion is there, you have this much amount of thickness already available to mitigate the corrosion issue. Then you have something called a trim material. This is for the sensitive parts. For example, your valve trim, for example, has to be more superior than your body material at times. So sometimes the trim material is mentioned. Maybe it could be stainless steel or hastoloy, etc. Now, let us look at the next thing, which is here the connection. Now, if you see here, something is mentioned here called as three inch and this symbol stands for a flanged connection. So it's a flanged connection, which is coming out from the vessel. And then let's see this another symbol to it. Now, if you try to understand the symbol with a bubble, this symbol basically stands for orifice flow meter. These symbols are given in the legend sheet of PNID and it is very easy to decipher. So let's try to look now what is inside the bubble. You have three components inside the bubble. The first one is actually the variable that is being manipulated or that is being measured and controlled. Here the variable is flow. Then you have the second letter, which is basically the type of device that has been used to either measure or control it. For example, let's try to look from ISA perspective that what are these letters standing for? So ISA 5.1 has a table 4.1, which has identification letters for each of these cases. So for example, let's take a small snippet from that. So here's F standing for flow. Similarly, you would have L which is standing for level, P which is standing for pressure, T standing for temperature, etc. Now we'll try to look at the second letter or the second variable which is here, which is sometimes it could be a C. So F was the variable, right? So FC would be flow controller. FV would be flow valve. So the V stands for valve. T stands for transmitter. Had it been level transmitted, it would have been LT. Similarly, FI would have been flow indicator. Now, sometimes it's a combination like FIT, which is flow indicator transmitter. So it has the indication function also and the transmitter function also. Now you see here, there's another signal coming from FT, which is going to a square box. Remember square box is a very important thing. And the square box has something inside of it, which is either a circle or a diamond shape. Now the circle stands for BPCS. Don't be confused. It's a very simple word, which means basic process control system. But usually in the instrumentation world, we call it DCS and this is SIS. So remember DCS and SIS are the two systems, especially which are put in the control systems. And here either of this will come inside the square. So what happens is let's put the circle here. So it's a DCS system to it and it has got an FIC, which means flow indicating controller and you will have the same sequence number so that the same loop has the same number to it. Now let us try to look and indicate what happens after this. But before that, there's a line in between it. If you see a line here, that means that because it's an indication, this is available at the front panel of the control engineer who's sitting in the control room. Had there been a dotted line, it's in the rear side of it so that the controller cannot see it in front of it. Now let us look at what happens when you connect it. But once you understand that when you're connecting this thing, this line is a dashed line, right? This dashed line stands for an electrical connection. Had it been a a soft signal it would have this kind of connection so this is between communication between one system to the other system had it been line with two parallel lines going together then this is nothing but your pneumatic signal which is especially used for valves then you have some crazy snake like thing what is this this is for a wireless signal so now wireless is becoming common so had it been a wireless signal it would have had the this symbol now, if you see here, this signal is going from the controller to control something. What is that? This symbol stands for a valve. And if you see here, there's a bubble attached to it. The bubble is basically telling what is the name of the valve and the sequence number to it. So it's a flow control valve 
and the number is 101 the same loop number to it usually if you notice in vals you will have this symbol very 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 common why because this stands for a reducer here it's a concentric reducer and if you see there's a size mentioned to it again with respect to valve you will see besides it it's mentioned the size of the valve so here the valve is six inches so the line is getting reduced to six inches and eventually it's blown up to its normal size of again to 10 inches notice here the same thing is written 10 into 6 so always the greater one is written before you have to see the symbol and understand whether the line is getting reduced or is it increasing now once you have learned this thing once important thing to understand besides the valve what other things are mentioned is something called as fc or fo this means is whether the valve is fail close or fail open the next important thing which is very much missed with engineers is something called as this symbol. This stands for hand wheel symbol. So sometimes it could be a control valve with a hand wheel also in case the actuator fails or manually it has to be turned on. So remember this could be missed during an engineering review. Now finally let us look into another aspect of it which is if you see here what are these lines which are going. So this is basically if it is going to another PNID you need to understand which PNID is the line going through right. So it connects and lets you know that which PNID is this line connected to. But how do you know whether this line is coming from a PNID or going to another PNID? It is with respect to this symbol. If it's coming, if the arrow is towards the coming side, then you understand that it's coming from one PNID to the other. But if you see at the right side, it's going to another PNID, so the arrow is in that direction. Finally, once we understand that where the line is coming and going from, there's another important thing about a line which needs to be known. What is that? That is nothing but the line number. This is extremely important for almost any engineer that is working in any PNIDs. So if let's try to decode and understand the line numbers. So first thing here is the first thing stands for the line size. So what is your line size? Is it three inch, four inch? You get to know that. The second thing is the unit. Which unit is it belonging to? So plants are usually divided into various units like 141, 143, etc. PG stands for what is the fluid code? So here it's process gas, for example. So you understand what type of fluid if it's hydrogen you might need to have some special precautions etc so fluid code helps us to understand what is inside that line this is like the tag number a sequence number to the line because a lines might be 10 20 50 thousand lines in a plant so you can understand very easily that as per this unique sequence you can identify the lines finally this is one of the extremely important thing which is called as pipe specification and i would call in simple words dna of the pipe with this pipe specification you can search in the document called as pipe specifications and with this number you will find out is what is the rating of the pipe material of the pipe corrosion allowance what type of gasket you can use what is the trim material of the valve every single thing related to it this is extremely important and finally this last is usually reserved for insulation so here hi might stand for hot insulation sometimes it's cold insulation heat tracing etc this is the final digit of the line number which stands for now before we go ahead just a quick test to let us see and everyone will be assured that we have learned this thing. So for this example is taken from ISA 5.1. Can you tell me here what is this symbol standing for? So here's your first question. The second question is what does this symbol stand for? A square and inside that is a circle. Third question for you is what is this signal? a dotted line and you have some circles in between what does this mean and finally what does this mean this snake like crazy symbol what is this signal type available can you answer these four amazing questions in the comment section so i'll be rest assured that my efforts were very fruitful and you were able to understand how to read a pnid and let me know what other videos you need to watch and i'll try to make them as quickly as possible thank you so much for watching have a great day ahead